Anyway, we're glad you're here tonight. We have uh, Brother Mike Puthers is going to do some teaching tonight and tomorrow night. And uh, I told him, I said, I kind of misworded this when I said it was a mission conference. That's not really what it is. This is kind of an introduction to faith, promise, mission giving for the next two or three days. Uh, the why, the where, the, uh, the why, uh, the how, and, and, and the purpose in it and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to let these guys do that. Uh, I've, I've already spoke to you about it. And so um, sometimes it's better hearing from someone else. And so Brother Mike's going to teach tonight and tomorrow night. And then Brother Mike Wyatt uh, is going to preach Sunday morning. And uh, I know it'll be a good message because his wife still writes his sermons, I think. But... Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've known these, we've known these, but we were sitting over here talking about how long ago it was, and they said something about 20 years, and I said, no, 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 whoa, 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 you're making me feel old now, and Mike said, well, brother, Holt, that boy that wore his bowling shoes home from the bowling alley that day, because he thought he got a new pair of shoes, because they made him put on bowling shoes, uh, is now 22 years old, <laughs> and that really made me feel old, and so... Uh, but there are go missionaries going to the UK, and they have a table set up back here in the foyer. And uh, so get by and get a prayer card off their table and uh, be a blessing, all right? Um, appreciate you being here tonight. Let's stand, and we'll begin with a word of prayer, and then we'll sing a song or whatever, and uh, then we'll just let Brother Mike come and do what God's laid on his heart, all right? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Because you first loved us. And Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house once again tonight. And Father, we're excited about what you're going to do in the hearts and the lives of people over this period of the next two or three days as we kind of try to introduce faith promise and the principle behind it and the why and, and, and all of those kind of things. And Father, I pray that you'd begin even now to deal with each and every heart. Father, faith promise mission giving is something every individual in church can be involved in, whether it's a nickel a week or whether it's $500 a week. It's the amount that you lay on our hearts. And, Father, we're trusting you for that, and we're trusting you to do something great in our midst in the next two or three days that we'd go away saying, you know, it's a blessing to be a part of a mission-minded church. Not just a mission-supporting church, but a mission-minded church. And we'll be forever grateful and thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's all y'all's. I guess you can remain standing because you're going to be sitting for a little while in a minute. Turn to page number 256. It is well with my soul. 256. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well. in part 
heart but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well with my soul conference and how to go about things and what to do, it just so happened the Lord sent these folks down to visit one Sunday, and he and I got standing there at the back corner talking about faith promise mission giving and what their church was doing and, and all those kind of things, and I thought, what better of a teacher to come and teach on faith promise, so it's all yours, brother. Thank you, Brother Holt. I, uh, when he asked me, I thought, man, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a preacher, I'm not a pastor, um, I'm just a teacher. So um, hopefully it'll be uh, what the Lord has for us today. Um, before we get started, I want let's, to let's, I want to go to the Lord. I want everybody to go to the Lord at your seat, okay? Bow your head. I want you to ask God to speak to your heart about what he wants you to do, okay, and what he wants this church to do. I think your uh, pastor is your leader and we're supposed to obey our leaders and uh, if he's wanting you to go into faith promise to believe that it would be the right thing and he's done a great work here god's done a great work through your pastor here so let's pray everyone i just want you to pray on your own and then uh then i'll pray to close this Heavenly Father, God, we love you, Lord. We thank you for your love. Thank you for blessing us. Lord, you have allowed us to live in America and have everything that we need, God, and, and way, way more than we need. Let's pray you'd speak to our hearts about what you'd have us to do, Lord. Have this church to do as, as uh, in, in missions, Lord. Help them to be able to take on new missionaries. Help them to be able to uh, do more for the ones that they support. And Lord, when people come through here and, and they're in need to get on the field and souls are dying and going to hell, God, I just pray that you would help us to get a burden for those people that uh, around the world and, and throughout our country, uh, Lord, and, and just pray that you would give us a great burden for them, help us to see them, and help us to want to be a part of what's going on in, in, in the lives of those people and what the Holy Spirit is doing. Uh, around the world, Lord, through missions. I pray, God, that you would just give us a great burden for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so I, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I am, I'm extremely humbled uh, that your pastor would ask me to come and speak. Um, it's a great privilege, but I also feel like it's, it's, a, it's a great responsibility. I really feel like... Um, it's, it's a huge responsibility uh, to talk to you about um, 
faith promise. What I what I believe, what I've been practicing for multiple years, uh, I believe it's the best way uh, to support missionaries, and it doesn't take away from your church finances. Um, so I'm going to try to um, I'm going to tell you about myself, and then I'm going to tell you about um, how mission, how Faith Promise started, and then we'll get into some of the Bible about uh, what missions is, and about giving, and about our need to give, and then uh, then we'll close sometime after that, hopefully. Uh, <clears throat> I don't smell food. I'm going to smell that tomorrow night, and I'm probably going to rush through. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hope. Hopefully it will be not to be too short or too long. Uh, also, my my mom and dad. I have to teach and preach to my mom and dad and my big sister, which is kind of my boss. <laughs> no, not not really true. She she was she was a, a merciful sister sometimes, but <laughs> since she got married, she settled down and was uh, really not really nice to me and uh, and my brother. So. <laughs> And heard my brother, don't get on a, don't get on a text stream with him because you'll be on there all day and it'll be like you'll have like I get home from work and it's like 500. <laughs> if you would turn to, in your Bible to Ecclesiastes 11. I should have marked these. I did not. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I was I was gonna go through here and mark all my passages, and uh, I don't even know if I can find it. It's after Proverbs, right? Yeah. Um, and my daughter called me that had just had a baby about on on the Halloween. She had a baby on Halloween. Uh, my new grandson Bruce. Um, she called me in kind of distress and said uh dad our basement is flooded can you come over it wasn't flooded but it was toilet water <laughs> in the basement <laughs> that was nasty and she said can you come help brady uh get this fixed if you can and i said uh yeah i need to run home and do a few things and i'll come i was working on going through my lesson again and everything and uh so i got over there about five and started running a snake about 5 30 or 6 and i left quit running it at about 11. and so yeah <laughs> so the devil was fighting me yesterday so um okay i want to talk about myself and my conversion first okay i uh, uh dad was in the air force and mom and us kids were growing up in california for a little bit and we uh, kind of started getting in church when we were in California. Um, I think mom's parents and her siblings had talked to her about you need to get in church and things. And I assume that was what happened. I don't know, mom. <laughs> Is that what was going on? Um, this may be interactive, so <laughs> it's the only way I know how to do it. Anyway, um, and so we got in church, and then we moved to Kansas, to Derby, and we started going to a Southern Baptist church there. First Baptist Church, I think it was, no, it was, uh, what was it called, Tammy? Pleasant View, thank you. Uh, my sister had gotten saved at a Billy Graham crusade. Is that no, correct? Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> a crusade. <laughs> Randy Smith, okay. But he had talked about, um, I, I can kind of remember some of it, Aunt's going over and we're kind of like ants getting dropped into a fire yeah and anyway she got saved and so um i don't know if it was the sunday after or whatever i'm 11 years old she goes down the aisle just a couple minutes later i thought i i need to go down there so i walked down the aisle and nobody deals with me no i didn't pray i didn't repent of my sins i I claim that as my salvation, and then Dad comes home from Thailand, Thailand, and a few days later, you know, I'd gotten saved. His daughter was saved. God got a hold of his heart, 
he knelt his bed and he called on the Lord and got saved. And uh, so I got baptized with my dad. So I claimed that as my salvation for years. And, but there was no peace, no peace in my heart. Uh, a lot of times at the invitation, even in Wichita, uh, we had a really small church there, had a really good pastor, and he would preach hard and nobody would go down. And I thought, man, I need to get saved. And I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't go down. I was too proud. And uh, so I lived that way for years. I went to college. I got out. Of, I was in church my first semester, second semester. I got out of church doing things that college kids did. And I thought, you know, I need to get back in church. And so I went to several churches in, in Stillwater. I went to Oklahoma State. Sorry. <laughs> go folks. Uh, <laughs> so I went, I went to several churches. I went to uh, several Baptists. I even went to the, the girl I was dating. I went to the Church of Christ with her. Never got under conviction, never anything. And I wasn't living right. And uh, then I went to uh, Bible Davis Church in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, Brother Sam Davidson preached. Amen. And God got a hold of my heart. Amen. And I didn't go down I didn't go pray I just left and I came back later and didn't I never I came back and prayed but I I think I was too proud and I was holding it in and I didn't get saved at that point and I just got busy in church okay I was teaching sixth grade boys Sunday school as a college kid I was uh, a bus captain as a college kid I was in the choir I was giving missions I was giving my tithe I was giving dad's money <laughs> probably <laughs> but I was given I was given you know and I just kept doing that and I felt good about it but there wasn't a peace there was not a peace in my heart that I had been saved and every once in a while I'd, I'd, someone would preach well I'd go down and pray about my sin uh, and someone else would come and preach about hell. And I would say, I'm, you know, down in my heart, I knew God was working on me. Holy Spirit was doing work. I knew that I wasn't saved. And then, uh, then I moved from Stillwater. Well, yeah, from Stillwater. I taught one year in Perry, Oklahoma. And I moved to uh, Liberal, Kansas, and started going to Fellowship Baptist. Same thing. I was in church. I was busy. I was active. But every once in a while, an invitation would come. I'd go down and pray. I wouldn't get any peace. But I knew that deep down inside that I was too proud and that I had not fully repented and given my heart to, to Christ. And so in 1996 at Cedar Hills Baptist Camp in Beer, Oklahoma, I finally gave up and gave my heart and life to Christ. And so uh, some of the verses that uh, stood out to me was Second Peter 1.10, and it says, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give all diligence to make your calling and election sure. So that was a verse that I thought, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I know people, people doubt their salvation. They are saved because the devil doesn't want you to be, be a good Christian. But um, once I, I thought of that verse and I prayed and, you know, and constantly thought of that verse, also 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, there were some things that weren't new. You know, there were some things that weren't new in my life. And so those two verses really kind of stood out to me. So, um, you know, Jesus Jesus came to the earth to die for our sins. Okay, he came to the earth, um, lived a perfect life. He was God's son, but he was also God the son. And... God saw fit to let him die horrible death, the most horrible death probably ever invented. Uh, he was naked on the cross. Just think about being naked in front of thousands of people. Uh, they saw him with loincloth, but I don't know they had one. So they crucified him, and he died. His, son, his blood covers our sin. His blood is what he shed so that we could be saved. And then three days later, 
he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He rose from the dead, and then, then he ascended to the Father. And now he's on the right hand of God, pleading for you and for me, and for the lost, okay, that we were talking about. <coughs> um, this is what missions is all about, the, the gospel, getting the gospel out there, getting the seed out uh, to the world. I'm going to do something that's kind of maybe weird, but I want everyone to quote John 3.16. Can everybody quote it? <laughs> All right, ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, so good. You guys get an A. <laughs> I am uh, I'm teaching, I teach uh, science at Fellowship Baptist School in Liberal, Kansas, and I taught 31 years in public school, and now I'm teaching uh, at Fellowship Baptist. Um, I want to read Luke uh, two, uh, 10, 2, if you guys want to go there. I hold your place in Ecclesiastes. Like I said, I should have marked these. That's all right before John Luke chapter 10 and verse 2 <clears throat> therefore he said unto them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest God wants laborers in his harvest in today's day and age, they can't go without money. I mean, they can go try. There are some places that they can go and live like on a loan. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that show. <laughs> but not very many. They have to have money to go. Okay, uh, and, and it's our responsibility to pray that God sends them. If He's going to send them, we gotta we gotta provide for them. Okay, let's look at Ecclesiastes real quick. Uh, Chapter 11, verse 1 through 6. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Verse 2. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south, or toward the north, in the place where it falleth, where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Verse 4. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that re regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Okay. In verse 1, so what, is, what does this mean? Uh, cast your bread upon the waters. Any guesses? <laughs> Any responses? Anyone? What, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think? Somebody? This is class. Your witness, okay. Your witness, okay. Could be our witness, all right. Um, it also could be not the music group of the 70s. Yes. <laughs> Not bread. <laughs> That's for the old people here. <laughs> it was a good group, yeah. No? Uh, yeah? So our bread could be our witness. Um, but it says upon the waters. Okay? So what are the waters? What does that indicate to anybody? Multiple people. Multiple people. Yeah, in, in Revelation it talks about the waters. Multitudes of people, okay? So we can't personally, we can't personally go to the world, okay? Uh, we have to cast our bread upon the waters. And a lot of times bread, hey, I'm making some bread, okay? So a lot of times that's your money. And our money is used to get the seed out, to get the bread out. Um, what about, we will find it after many days in that, in that first verse. Well, what is, what's going to happen if we cast our bread out is it's going to come back to us. There's going to be a reward. There's going to be a reward for giving your bread out or your money out or your witness out uh, to the people around you. You may not see it 
in cash, but you may see it in multiple other ways. There are many, many ways that you will see it. Um, so one of, one of my most, the, one of the uh, things that blesses me the most is when a missionaries come back and they tell their stories. And a lot of times they have slides and they show their, their videos now. Back in the old day, they had the thing with the slides in it. But anyway, you, you get to see the faces of people that got saved, and you think, you know, we, we gave some money to that. It, and it means something to you, personally, that you see that. And it's a blessing. It's a, that's one of the great blessings. Hey, I had a little part in that. God allowed me to have a part in that. Because God is good to me, God has allowed me to do that. Um, I'm sure when we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot more blessings, uh, tons more. I mean, we don't even know, we can't even fathom the blessings that are going to be in heaven. Um, let's look at verse 3, or 2, sorry. Um, if I could count as a teacher. Uh, Give a portion to seven, and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. So what's God telling us to do there? Give some, give some of that bread to seven. Give some of that bread to eight. The more missionaries that you can support, the more that you can uh, give a good amount to, the more chances they have of spreading the gospel, the more people they can reach. So give, 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 give. Because uh, we don't know. Uh, we don't know what evil's on the earth. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, Something like happened in Israel could happen. There's a thousand Christians. Now I don't know what brand or whatever if they're truly saved people but there's a thousand Christians in three churches hiding in Gaza right now they're Palestinians that that would like to get out of there well if if somebody hadn't gone to those people they wouldn't be saved those people may be gone tomorrow you know <clears throat> they may be gone off the earth and if there are Christians they'll be in heaven Amen. so so we don't know what evil there is out there that's going to keep things from happening so we need to give and it says give to seven yea unto eight <clears throat> all right verse three uh, part a if the clouds are full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth <clears throat> so the uh the clouds rain down and we're sowing the seed of the gospel god can use that rain to increase the gospel and then in verse four or three and four it talks about a tree falling in the woods it's, it's not going to affect you that much. What happens today or tomorrow or the next day, we can't be worried about that. In verse 4, it tells us not to be worried about, if we are worried, we're not going to go out and sow. We're not going to sow our seed. If we're worried about not having enough money tomorrow, we're not going to give. Okay, um, So we can't be worried about those things. We're not going to reap if we don't sow. I mean, you can't reap if you don't put seed in the ground. So you need to sow. Uh, verse 5, verse 5 says, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. We don't, we don't know how God's going to prosper it. He may, do a, he may do a lot with our little. Okay, whatever we can give, he may do a lot with it. Um, what about the little boy with the, let me see, two fish, I think? Or five fish? No, two fish and five loaves. Five fish and two loaves, whatever it is. <laughs> he, he fed 5,000 men, it says. So he could have been up to 15,000 people with, with just a little bit. Um, so be willing to give a little, okay? Uh, God, will, God will bless it. God will magnify it. There's no telling what God's going to do. Uh, verse 6 <clears throat> In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether which one shall prosper, whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. <clears throat> so sow in the morning, tell people about Christ. Sow in the evening, tell people about Christ. Uh, give money, give what you can, give what you can here, give what you can there. Uh, God's going to use it. We don't know which one's going to be good. He may use them both. You may use whatever you do. Um, pray for me. I have a, a neighbor. Um, him and his girlfriend live next door. Um, she she's Catholic. She's dyed in the wool. I mean, she's there. I mean, 
he's nothing, really. But pray for me that I can be a good witness to him. I'm trying to work into their lives, and, and I talk to him a lot. He's a really, really good guy. I mean, he's really good, really conservative, believes a ton of stuff like I do, uh, but he's not a Christian. So pray for him. His name is Jordan. So pray for him that I can be a witness to him so I can sow seed and see him saved hopefully soon. Uh, so we're encouraged to and commanded to to give, okay? I know that uh, many of you are already familiar with uh, Faith Promise. I know Leo and Shirley uh, were in Faith Promise churches for years and also part of the church that I'm a member of. So this is going to be a refresher to some of them. But a lot of you haven't maybe been in introduced to it. I guess a pastor has introduced you somewhat. Um, I started attending Bible Baptist in uh, 1984 in Stillwater, and I started giving to Faith Promise at that time as a, as a lost church member. I don't know if God blessed it before I was saved, <laughs> but, but um, uh, it was good for me emotionally, and it taught, me to, it taught me how to do it, how to give. Uh, so I've been doing it for 40 years, and I'm convinced that this is the, really the best way uh, for a church to support uh, missionaries because um, there's so much more that you can do locally as well as for your missionaries. Um, so first thing I want to do here, or the next thing, is give you the history of Faith Promise Missions Giving. All right, hopefully this doesn't throw you off any, but <laughs> it's, it's just a plan, okay? It's a biblical plan. It is biblical. I'll talk about that tomorrow night. It's a biblical plan, but... It's a, it's a uh, um, financially very wise plan uh, to use. And um, it's going to help you uh, increase your faith. It'll help you increase your faith. And the reward is so much. It, uh, spiritual reward and your reward emotionally is, is, is really real. Every time a mission come, missionary comes through, I'm crying just to see that, you know, what's going on because I know that I've been a part of that. So, um, so the history of the Faith Promise, um, it had its origins. It wasn't, didn't start in a Baptist church. It started in a Presbyterian church in Canada. A guy named Oswald Smith started it, came up with the plan. It made its way into independent Baptist churches not too long after that in the early 19, mid-1900s, around 1950, I think. Uh, a pastor in Tulsa, had a church member at Tulsa Baptist Temple, um, Clifford Clark, had a church member in his church uh, that was a businessman, and he knew Oswald Smith, the man from Canada, and he said, uh, if I pay for him to come down here, will you let him present faith, faith promises to some of the independent Baptist church uh, preachers? And he said yes, and so they came down. He came down and preached, and uh, what the independent Baptist churches had done up to this point uh, in missions was kind of what our Southern Baptist friends do, give 10% or 15% of their tithe, basically, or their budget that comes in per week uh, to missions, okay? Uh, so a little while, I'm going to show you how Faith Promise can be a lot better method for you. Oswald Smith came to Tulsa to present the idea. Several pastors were in that meeting, including a man from uh, Colorado named Carl Boonstra. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. Uh, he loved the concept, as well as many of the other independent Baptist preachers that were there. And they implemented it in, in their churches. They saw what people saw what was going on, what was happening in those churches. Other pastors picked it up. And so it became the primary method uh, which a lot of the independent Baptist churches around the country uh, give, and this is the way that they give. Um, I think it's, I feel like it's allowed us or enabled us to, the last century of giving has increased and we've been able to get more missionaries on the field, get more of the gospel out because of this method. Um, let me tell you a, a story about uh, three weeks ago, I believe, we had a missionary come through from Nepal. His name is uh, Joel Travis. His wife's name is Tahana. Um, and they're missionaries in Nepal. They raised their two children in Nepal over the last 14, 15 years. 
he he's the Nepali people don't make a lot of money they they go to work and they get some change every day for their work well he, he thought we need to give demissions so I'm gonna give them a way to do that so he bought clay pots little clay pots you know about this size a little piggy bank and he said just put some change in there whatever you can and we'll give that to missions and he's he, they would bring it to church on uh, once a week or once a month I think he said and they would break their pot open and they would collect the money and send it to their missionaries I think they're supporting like four or five missionaries out of Nepal and a, these people are poor um, but what happened was their general mission their general uh, offerings started going up and they were still given uh, to missions as well so he told me to introduce uh, he wanted me to introduce the way that they give it there in uh, Nepal so I just thought that was a really cool story and bless my heart uh, to see those Nepal, uh, Nepali people getting saved and baptized and what they're doing for missions even out of their poverty they've given we'll talk about the church at Philippi tomorrow and how they gave out of their poverty they gave in abundance out of their poverty um, and how they supported Paul so what is faith promise missions offering number one or letter a it's an offering uh, Malachi 3 8 uh, you guys all know that verse I'm sure God said he asked will a man rob God yet ye have robbed me but ye say wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings in tithes and offerings okay uh, what you give to faith promise is an offering above your tithe uh, we haven't given biblically unless we give both you need to give a tithe and you also need to give an offering uh, our tithe is 10 percent I think everyone knows that that's biblical uh, an offering is different it's an offering above the tithe to the Lord and it's it's a matter of the heart that's all it is 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 your heart willing to give the gospel out or in America we've got more than we need are we willing to get the gospel out and I feel like this is the best way to do it so first of all it's an offering it's an offering we promise to give okay we promise to give it it's not a pledge okay I, I talked to your pastor he's not put he does not want you to put your name on a card and write how much you're going to give on there he wants you to write how much you're going to give but you don't put your name on it it's between you and God and it's a promise that you make to God this is what I'm going to do per week this is what I'm going to do per quarter this is what I'm going to do per month um, it's good to do it weekly we my wife and I do it monthly because when I was teaching school I got paid once a month that was the first check that came out my tithe and my faith promise first check and God always provided we've never we've never missed a bill and ever missed a bill any bill if we would have my wife would have killed me <laughs> I wouldn't be here right now she, she's a stickler on that but she works in an office where people come in and you know they're Christians and they're big in town whatever and it's like they're they don't pay their bills you know you, you need to pay your bills God said you're worse than an infidel if you don't take care of your family your family's first absolutely you've got to do that okay when we get to talking about how to decide how much to give I mean we'll talk a little bit about that I mean you don't make a thousand dollars a month and give two thousand to faith promise is not gonna I mean if God lays that on your heart you got a lot more faith than I do <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, probably not the way it's going to happen. God might lay that on your heart, but I doubt it. I doubt that's the way. Usually it's, I'm doing this, I'm going out to eat these things we can talk about later. But usually it's that, and it's like, you know, I, I have that money I can use. I can give that to God, okay, and I can give that to Faith Promise. So it's not, it's not a pledge. A pledge is a horizontal agreement. Faith Promise and faith is between you and God so how our church does it is we give a card um, and we write on there how much we're going to give per week or month or whatever and then our pastor tells us do not sign the card do not put your name on it this is between you and God and um, uh, 
the only reason that we take out the cards is so that our pastor and our uh, treasurers, or not our treasurer, our trustees and our deacons know how much to budget to give to our to our missionaries. Otherwise, we wouldn't even take cards up. We'd just let it totally between you and God. So the only reason to take it up is so that you can budget. Generally, in churches uh, that do faith promise, a lot of times uh, they're guided by people that do it to budget maybe 80% of what you get in from the cards. You also got to watch and make sure a little kid didn't put $1,000 on there and things like that. <laughs> you kind of have to watch that. But once they get a, a number, once they get a number, usually the budget, because not, not everybody is faithful as they should be. Now, this year at our church, um, I'm going to brag on God. He, he has allowed us to give 100% so far going forward uh, this year. Uh, I think it's last year was the first time that we had, I think we had 101% of our faith promise coming last year. And then this year we're sitting at 100% right now or 99.8 or something. But by April when our faith missions year comes up, hopefully we'll have 100% giving. So it's, it's, a, it's a promise, it's an offering, and it's given by faith. A vital part of the Christian life, God tells us to live by faith. Okay, We're saved by faith. Uh, we're to live by faith. Um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11.6 what, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. All right? So if you're not given by faith, then, then it's sin. Um, our tithe, it takes a little faith to give tithe, but it's not, it's not an offering. It's not a faith. It's, if, you give, if you're given a little more, it's taking more faith and it's growing your faith. Okay? Uh, so make sure that, think about that when you're, when you're giving. We expect our missionaries to live by faith. And they, they have to. Uh, you all were on the field for 10 years in Japan. It, you, I mean, there's sometimes that a church drops you or whatever, and you, you've got to have faith that God's going to provide. We'll be all right. God's going to provide. You expect them to live by faith, so we should give by faith. Um, so why do we at Fellowship Baptist and Liberal and most many, I don't know that most do, uh, independent Baptist churches use faith promise? Uh, for their missions giving well number one it works okay at fellowship baptist we have quite a few people that are that are uh, we have a lot of people that are just not real rich we have a lot of people that are just middle of class middle uh middle income we have some people that are low really low income but we have a few people that are higher income and so god's allowed us to be uh have a pretty good general offering, a real good general offering. Um, yeah, but if we took 10 or 15% of that out to give to missions, it would hinder our ability to do what we do in liberal Kansas, hinder, hinder what we could do locally. So if we took 10 or 15% of that out, that would hinder us quite a bit. Um, we have a really good missions, or a really good ministry in town. Uh, so God allowed us to buy a property. Um, man, I can't remember what the date was, but we bought a property and we remodeled it. We got help remodeling. We remodeled, and um, and it just it took us a very short time to pay off well over two million dollars. I mean, within I think it was within ten years uh, we were able to pay that off. So God has blessed us a lot. I think a lot of that is because. Our church in the 1950s or 60s started doing faith promise, and God is just blessing and blessing and blessing uh, our church. Um, God blesses those that bless his servants. Am I going over time? <laughs> God blesses those that bless his servants. Uh, I have the numbers for 2020. Uh, we gave 27.6% of our general budget to faith promise. That's above and beyond faith promise. So almost 28% above faith promise. Uh, I mean above our general offering. Our general offering was, was big. Our faith promise was big as well. Um, this year it's even a lot bigger than that. 
So that's, if we took 10% out to give to missions, well, um, then that 10% we wouldn't have to use. We're given 17.6% above that to missions just because people are willing to give. Um, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurry through this. <laughs> so I see people fall asleep. No. <laughs> um, so I don't know what your church's budget is. Uh, let's just say a weekly budget is uh, 2,000 maybe offering. Uh, let's say that it came from 20 families. Uh, let's just say an average of $100 a week. Okay. Some would give maybe 10 and some would give three or four hundred maybe that's what their tithe is I don't know um, how that works for you guys but if you uh, if you had 20 families giving an average of a hundred dollars a week uh, if they gave 10 percent of that to missions you would have two hundred dollars less to work with so you would have eighteen hundred dollars to work with for that week but if everyone if you started giving faith promise and you still have 20 families giving a hundred dollars tithe but these same families give maybe ten dollars then you would still have $200 for faith promise or for missions, but now you still have $2,000 to work with. If you get 15, uh, if everyone gave 15, you'd have $300. So at the end of the year, if you add that up, um, you're gonna have a general offering of about $104,000. If you use, uh, if uh, without faith promise, you'd give 10,400 at 10%, okay? With fake promise, uh, you would give 15600 if you gave, uh, whatever I said, per week, um, 15 or 10 or $15, or 15. That'd be 5200 5, more. So you could take on uh, four missionaries uh, at $100 a piece per month. Uh, you could take on four more missionaries. And so you have four more missionaries that could get the word out. Um, so what could God do with those extra missionaries and what would that add to the church's blessings? Um, faith promise is a win-win-win proposition. The church wins because they have more finances available uh, to do, do the Lord's work. The missionaries win because they have more finances to do the Lord's work globally. And the church member wins because you never lose uh, when you're obedient to the work of God and giving generously. And best of all, the lost win because there's more missionaries uh, on the field to get that message of the gospel out. Okay, we don't know what God is going to do with our giving, but he promises to bless it. I think God will bless you more than you can imagine uh, in this church if, if you guys will go forward and, and, and try to put this into practice. I mean, um, just just $10 a week or even a Two or three dollars a week. It's gonna it's gonna make you uh, use your faith, and it's also gonna make uh, make it uh, better. Let's look at John chapter four. Let's be the last verses we read. John chapter four, verse thirty-five uh, through thirty-eight. <clears throat> John four thirty-five through thirty-eight. Eight. Say not ye, there are four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth, and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other man labored, and you are entered into his labors. So... Even if we are not the person that goes, we, we're going to reap rewards from God if we give. Um, this is why the why and how of faith promise. Tomorrow I'm going to give a biblical example and um, talk a little bit about uh, the blessings of missions giving. All right. And do you want to give an invitation? I don't think we'll give an invitation. I didn't bring a prayer card in here with me. Appreciate that, my brother. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'll leave notes. I might need them next week. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. I'll re-preach it. But uh, we're not going to give an invitation, but here's what I want you to do. You started out tonight praying for what God wanted you to do in your life. Not your neighbor, not your spouse, not, not, not anybody else. Your life. Okay? Uh, and I've told you a story before. When Jamie and I first got involved in Faith Promise, uh, actually it was Clifford Clark that came to ABT and did a Faith Promise mission conference. Uh, Brother Everly knew him. And that Sunday... I was on the bus, and I was late getting home, of course, and when I got home, I sat down at the kitchen table and was eating lunch. And she said, so what did you think? And, or I said, what did you think? And she said, it's going to scare you. And I said, well, I'll write it down, and you write it down, and let's flip a piece of paper over and see where we're at. Uh, that was in 1997, and we committed to give $100 a week. I wrote it down, she wrote it down. We flipped that paper over, both of us about died. I said, that's not possible. But with God, all things are possible. Okay? He will stretch your faith in ways you never dreamed of. Now, let me give you just a little bit, and I'll be done. When, when I first came, the church has always been a mission-supporting church. Okay? They've always supported missions and done a wonderful job. Uh, at one time, had like 19, and then it dropped off some, and we're trying to build that back up and all those things. But one of the things I told some of the guys is, we need to change the way we do things. Not that the, 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 it's unbiblical or any of that kind of stuff as much as it is let's do things God's way. Okay, God's specific about some things. He says in the Bible that the tithe belongs to the Lord, right? Okay, so then why would we rob the tithe to give missionaries? Okay, because the tithe's God's. And so we can't take from that tithe and support missions. That's not biblical. We've got to give God the tithe. So if we give God the tithe, then how are we going to support missions? With, with a free will offering. With a faith promise offering. And I can promise you this. I don't care who you are or what your social status is. You can never outgive God. Never. Never. And so I don't want to challenge you to go home tonight and tomorrow and think about what God wants your part to be. Just pray about it. We don't want rash decisions. I have prayer cards, and I will tell you now, the prayer card starts out with giving a nickel a week, a dime a week, 25 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, or another amount. Because I'm a firm believer that if you, tr if you truly put your faith in God, He will make it abundantly clear down to the penny what you need to give for faith promise missions. Okay, if it's a nickel a week, let it be a nickel a week because I can promise you if you give a nickel a week every week in 2024, by the end of 2024, you will have more faith than you have right now. Because God